Hey guys, my name is Patrice and I'm here to talk about a difficult yet serious topic, who to main in Apex Legends and who to play. In this video I will provide the stats for each Legends, win rate and all of that fun stuff, but we're not only going to look at the stats. I play Apex Legends since launch and I gathered quite some experience on every single Legend. And I would like to cover everything in this video that will help you to understand what Legend you should main and when you do decide on a Legend, feel free to watch a Legend guide to get in-depth explanation. All of the timestamps will be left down below and let's get into it. Let's start with Wraith. Wraith has a very aggressive playstyle and people love to push with her since she has a safe ability in which she can escape from the danger. So usually when Wraith gets low on health she can escape and get out of the bad spots. She is also a strong flanker since of her ultimate and the tactical combo. She gets a 30% speed boost and can flank an enemy. But the con is, is that you cannot use your weapon whilst under the ultimate. The tactical can cover this up. When you're in danger you can just use your tactical and immediately cancel out the teleporter that will cancel out both abilities after which you can either start your attack or come back through your teleport and heal up and only then go back to the attack again. So she has plenty of safe escapes. In conclusion I think Wraith will be suited most by aggressive pushing playstyle. Her hitbox also helps her to survive in heavy up close battles. Moving on to Pathfinder. You see Pathfinder is a bit more complex. He's a very strong flanker and if he's grappled used correctly, he can always be on top of the enemy or behind them, having a lot of advantage. But if you use the grapple to get into the fight, keep in mind that you cannot escape until the 14 second cooldown goes off. So you get to choose to either use grapple as an escape or an attack ability. Pathfinder is hard to main and there's a lot to learn, but he turns out to be a really strong flanker and aggressive legend. But if you choose to use him defensively with a sniper, you can also do this, because his grapple and zipline can provide an impossible to reach spots for you. So you'll be able to poke an enemy from long range and if you do get damaged you can just hide and heal up since you are far away from the enemy. So in conclusion Pathfinder is in the middle of both. He can be used in short range aggressive playstyle but could also be supportive poking legend and it's your choice to play him the way you want. Now let's cover the new legend Octane. This is a simple legend, all of his abilities are to get in close. Tactical is used to rush and get into the enemy safe space whilst the old could be used to flank or to get a high advantage. He can also use it to escape, especially if you destroy a mid air or something, but that is a bit hard one to do. I had best plays with him by being aggressive and suicidal, where I go in to deal as much damage as I can. He is definitely up close aggressive pushing legend. He can get up close really fast and in fight he also gets a 30% speed boost to strafe and dodge bullets. Something like Bangalore but loses health which is his con since most of the time you'll have around 60 to 70 health hence why I say is suicidal legend. He also benefits a lot from short range weapons like R99 or shotguns. Also Spitfire with purple mag does wonders since you can hip spray it. But snipers is something that is almost useless to him unless you want to quick scope. Another really strong aggressive pick would be Bloodhound. Since of his 30 second ult where he sees everything. He can push in very effectively because he sees the location of the enemies and their footsteps. He's like a sniffing dog that finds anyone. But there's a quite a big problem with him on console users and PC players as well and that's the frame drops but I'm sure this problem is going to be fixed in the future and personally I didn't really have any problems with that. Bloodhound ult is a very useful mid range since if people are hiding in the dark places or inside the houses you can actually see them through the windows because they are glowing red and it's really easy to deal damage from behind little cracks and stuff so you're still pretty safe after which you can push in under some grenades and finish off the poke down enemy. So Bloodhound is mid range legend and something as a second flanker in a way since he can provide good information for the squad and also poke the hiding enemy, finishing it up with an up close weapon push. He also benefits a lot from snipers and long range weapons such as wingman since he deals strong damage and is perfect mid range weapon. Hey guys, a little plug here, I would appreciate if you subscribe and follow me here on my Twitch and DLive, all the social links are down in the description, I'm going to stream more often now around 3-4 times a week and it'll be amazing if more people show up. Thank you and back into the video. Moving on to Lifeline. I probably played the most with Lifeline and from my experience she benefits from a mid-range fight where you can exchange some damage and heal yourself up with a drone and a shield cell. Since of your passive you heal faster and can almost always squeeze in a shield mid-fight. You can also use doors to block the enemies for a few seconds and that will give you enough time to get some heals in as well. Lifeline is perfect for mid-range and mostly mid-range. If you come too close then your abilities won't be able to help you and if you are very far away then the enemy will also have enough time to heal up. So it's more like you exchange some shots, throw in a shield and maybe another shield whilst when you're hopping towards the enemy that might be also trying to heal and then go on finish him with the pretty much full health. You can also squeeze in a shield whilst bunny hopping away and repositioning if you are getting pushed. So lifeline playstyle is safe but not too safe and she was a perfect fit for me for a long time until I got a bit bored. Also everyone loves lifeline in team since of her supportive abilities. So in conclusion lifeline is best suited for chilled out mid range battle players. 
but she is more strategic and there is more to think about. You have to know when to push and when to heal and also when to revive your team or run away. Since of her quick revive and shield, it's very common for Lifeline to heal her team mid-battle in relatively close range, but still having enough time. Now let's cover the thick boys as well. Starting of Caustic. Caustic is best suited by camping playstyle. There's less people that prefer to play slowly and patiently, but they still exist. With his playstyle, it's very easy to secure points. You can place 6 traps all over the place like supply ships or bunkers and have a lot of control over it. Yes, people can still shoot your traps down, but that will tell you if someone is coming. You can also block the doors inside buildings, which obviously also gives away if the enemy is pushing it. It took me some time to get used to his playstyle and adapt to it, but when I got a hang of it, it was a lot of fun, since even the entire squad versus me alone couldn't push me as fast since of the gas everywhere. And I make sure to explode the gas myself just to make sure that they don't break the trap before that. And on top of that, you have an ultimate that is perfect for pushing out enemies out of their comfort zones. And combined with Octane, you can even launch your traps just like the ultimate. Caustic is best suited by a slow paced camping playstyle and up close weapons. Since his gas gives away the enemy positions, it's really useful to have mid to close range weapons so you can push the enemy who enters your comfort zone. But be ready if you don't have friends that play in similar way, you will most likely be left on your own, so you will have to adapt and play half half. Not too much camping and not too fast either. Caustic also benefits from cramped places instead of open areas. In open areas you can throw your gas around for cloud protection but in general you won't have escapes and can be easily shot since you are also a bigger target. Moving on to another big boy, Gibraltar. After his patch, he's a bit more playable but still pretty hard. It's nice to see a bit more Gibraltars in the game though. Gibraltar is a mid to long range legend. He benefits from mid range since he can land his ult on the enemies easier. But long range is also really good for him since you can just drop your dome and shoot from inside whilst being protected. You just have to get a bit closer to the wall. So Gibraltar can snipe enemies and poke them whilst being completely covered for the time the dome is placed. He can also use dome up close to confuse the enemies and run around the walls to protect himself but in general close range is the worst place for Gibraltar since of his hitbox. Peacekeeper almost always will land at least half of the pallets on him. Unlike Wraith when even up close sometimes you will only deal 10 damage so Gibraltar is also suited for more of defensive playstyle and in worst case you can cover your escape with an ultimate. Also I would like to mention that Gibraltar is pretty much the only character right now that deals damage with his ultimate. Other characters do have ultimate damage and some stuff but Gibraltar can actually melt through enemy teams with his ultimate if landed correctly. So that's another really good pro for him. Alright, two more legends left and both of them are based on strategic playstyle. First, let's cover Mirage. The reason why I say he is strategic is because of his tactical and his ultimate. It's hard abilities that require some force since now it's a bit harder to bamboozle people. You have to use him more in up close fight where an enemy is on his toes so he accidentally messes up and shoots the decoy. Mirage is close to mid range legend. He could be used from mid range since you could send a decoy one way whilst coming out from the other angle and that would provide you with an extra second or a free shot. You could also use his ultimate ultimate to attack the enemy but it's hard to use it since you won't be able to stop it and you won't be able to use your weapon either. So you have to predict exactly where your ultimate will come off and come to an enemy just at the right time so you get your weapon back. There's also a technique you can use to make the decoys run instead of just standing in a circle so that adds more confusion. The tactical could also be used to block off shots. It does work as a very weak meat shield but it could cover you from one shot. It can be a peacekeeper shot or a sniper but it only covers from one. So again something like R99 it won't be really effective. In conclusion, Mirage is good for more strategic playstyle where you have to actually plan at least a little bit instead of just running in straight. He benefits from quiet flanking and slow paced playstyle and also has a good enough escapes to get out of the certain situations. But on open zones it's usually easy to see his cloak so try to keep yourself near cover. And last but not least, Bangalore. Also a very strategic legend, her ultimate isn't a great attack ability and needs to be used mostly for zoning and cutting off the enemy escapes, or if you're getting to third party, you can use it to slow the other team down. And her tactical is also hard to use since it can help your team or distract them and cut off their vision. It needs to be used with caution. You can throw it at the enemy to cut off their shooting vision if they have advantage, or throw it on yourself to run away and heal up. But you have to keep in mind that Bloodhound and legendary sides can see through the smoke, so you need to keep those things in count. Bangalore is great for strategic and smart playstyle because of her abilities and in worst case you have 30% speed boost from her passive to save yourself and strafe in the close up battle. 
It can also be used to attack or to escape. Bangalore benefits most from mid-range battles, but if you get a sniper legendary scope, then you can also do great in long range because the smoke throw range is also very long. You pretty much just dash it into the enemy so they can't see you, but you can see them. Bangalore is a mix really. In my opinion, she is more of a support legend than Pathfinder is, but you could also use her aggressively and pushingly because of her passive and smoke covers. Alright, now we finished with all the legends, but there's still a few important things I want to talk about. First, I would like to bring up the stats. Okay, so I got this website, playapex.net, it tracks up the matches, and right now you can see that it tracks 65,000 matches. So what we can say from this currently is that Wraith is the most popular legend to play. And um, then it goes Octane because he's just came out, also Lifeline, Pathfinder are also very common to see, and Bangalore. Then Bloodhound, Mirage, Caustic and Gibraltar are very rare. So for example, Gibraltar is 4.3% compared to Wraith almost 20%. So basically Wraith is played 4 times more than Gibraltar is. So we have to keep that in mind. When we look at something like win rate, we can see that Wraith is 19% chance of win rate so most people that play with Wraith and uh, there's like 20% chance of a win rate in the match but you have to also think of that she is the most popular legend right now and she's picked way more than somebody like Caustic. Pathfinder is actually picked less than Lifeline or Octane but still has bigger win rate chance. The reason is is because if Pathfinder is used correctly and you learn to use his grapple he's actually a super strong legend as well and now when his hitbox got fixed he's pretty much like just as good as Wraith I would say in my opinion. Also a lot of like very good players that I know they actually play Pathfinders I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. From what we can see right now for the meta, we see that Wraith is most picked and Wraith has the biggest win rate. Pathfinder is not the most picked and he has really big win rate as well. Then it goes Lifeline, Octane and it only gets worse from there. But somebody like Caustic, which is only 4%, which is 4 times less, he actually has 10% win rate, which is only twice as less. Up here we can see the top 3. So usually, uh, how I understand this is um, uh, how often does like Wraith gets to top 3. It's 30% chance. Um, she is used most, but 30% chance is still pretty damn decent, and I would say like uh, like by playing Wraith you just have a bit more advantage in general because of the way her hitbox works and just in general that it's made so right now. And But looking at other characters, like they don't have a bad score as well. So Bangalore has actually a pretty decent score as well compared to Wraith. They are both really fast up close relations and they both can run away and hide, so I would assume that's why they are well, like there's a high chance for them to get to top 3 because of their escaping abilities. Now the damage is right here, you can see the damage for Wraith and Pathfinder has uh, just the second damage output even though he's played less and um, he has uh, he lands less top 3 times than Bangalore, he still has more damage output. Up here we can look at headshots and we can see that Pathfinder has more headshots than Wraith. I would I would assume that that's because Pathfinder is always on the higher grounds, you know, Pathfinder is always above for against the enemy. So by shooting from above to down, you pretty much always will be like very often, more often landing headshots. And if we look like kills, um, Wraith and Lifeline has pretty much similar stuff, which means that Lifeline actually gets pretty decent kills as well. I would assume that's because of her survivability and the way she heals up, she can get more kills. By looking at all these stats, we can I can just tell you that, you know, for example, if you, I don't know, if you feel like Wraith and Pathfinder is your choice, and the Wraith and Pathfinder is like what you want to play like, then you can just look at the stats and uh, by seeing these stats you can kind of understand that Pathfinder is pretty much the same as Wraith, so you don't actually have to just play Wraith because she's meta right now, you can also play Pathfinder because he's pretty much shifted in meta after the update as well. Generally analyzing the stats, if you will be choosing between somebody like Lifeline and uh, Gibraltar, for whatever reason you think like Gibraltar is nice support then you can see that Gibraltar actually is like has weaker win rate but he is also picked way less than anyone else um, so don't just look at the stats completely you know um, he does have a bigger hitbox and stuff so you're probably much better off going with somebody like Lifeline but even then as like people say like in League of Legends you still pretty much better pick off whoever you prefer playing beyond whoever you play best. Uh, so now, when you know the stats, you can also think about the meta and what popular and more abused compared to others. I would advise people to play with whoever they want to play, but sometimes you do need to know that it's way harder to win with somebody like Gibraltar compared to if you're playing Grave. There's also this thing that people used to do in League of Legends, and I'm not sure if it's applicable here, but we can certainly give it a try. 
Basically, you have to pick out legends you like and the meta legends. Then play with them around 10 games each, try to make them as accurate as possible, drop down in a relatively same area, so for example only school town, and obviously if you die without a weapon or there's no one around compared to the last game where there was like 5 squads, then don't count that match. Try to make the game match as much as possible. And what you want to do is to record all of the games, so write down your kills, your damage, your survival time, win or lose with each legend, and try to record all of them after which compare them and see with which which one you do best. It could even be the legend you don't play as much, but turns out you are better with that legend playstyle. Of course this game is not League of Legends and there is a lot of luck based stuff here, but if you really don't know who to main you might want to try this out and see who you do best with by the stats. Alright guys, let's end the video here. If you want to help out the channel and me, I would appreciate if you subscribed and followed me on Twitch and DLive. All the social links are down in the description. I'm going to stream more often now and it'll be amazing if more people show up. I'll usually put a community post up saying I'm live so you won't miss out. If you like this video, don't forget to like or dislike it if you didn't like it. Also, if you have anything to add or talk about different playstyle, anything that I missed really, feel free to comment it down below. It will help out the future viewers and me personally. Thank you for watching and I see you guys in the game. Bye.